Hey folks, and welcome back to the channel. Thought I'd do a little video showing some things I've been working on, uh, projects on the bench, that sort of thing. Right now my main focus has been really acquiring freight cars and practicing weathering techniques, and uh, now that I've been doing a lot of modern stuff recently, I've been seeing a lot of graffiti and trying to apply that to freight cars that I've seen, and you know, just trying that whole thing out. Uh, as opposed to using decals, I've been hand painting it. But why don't I show you just a little bit about what I've been doing. First up is this Walther's Mainline uh, reefer car. I picked this up at the Austin train show for a pretty good price and I don't have anything like it so I thought it'd be fun to uh, get it and weather it and it a, it's just a big blank white canvas really so I thought I'd uh, try my hand at you know roof weathering and that sort of thing. And this one has some graffiti on the side. This is based off of uh, graffiti I've seen in photos online. I haven't seen any of these cars around here in Austin, so I think they're all kind of outdated at this point, but I thought it would be fun to, um, you know, get one and just kind of work on some techniques using uh, dry brushing techniques and oil paint and that sort of thing. Next up is this Walther's Proto uh, Auto Carrier. I uh, picked this up for a really good price, and I figured this would be a great candidate for some graffiti based off of, again, photos. Actually, these were photos that I've taken. Uh, I have photos of uh, this car here, uh, or a similar one, a similar TTX card, and I figured uh, I like the uh, the design, and I figured why not you know, try to emulate that. And then I faded the paint a little bit with the uh, acry acrylic paint and everything really satisfied with how this one turned out. This is actually uh, two different cars, but I went ahead and put uh, the same, I went ahead and did graffiti on both sides of this car, even though they're, these would have been seen on two different cars. I don't know what the other sides look like uh, for, you know, what this particular side would have on the other side, if that makes any sense. It's got some faded paint and a faded roof and some rust streaking. Uh, wheels and trucks are all, uh, you know, grimed and dirtied up. The under chassis isn't, hasn't been touched. I need to figure out how I want to approach that. Next up is another uh, Walther's Proto auto carrier, also featuring graffiti based off of uh, a car that I've seen. And I haven't seen another green Burlington Northern auto carrier for a while. I've only seen the one that I have out on film, so I don't have anything yet to put on the other side. Uh, so... I'm waiting to get, to get some inspiration for this side, uh, but for now, this one has a lot going on, and I'm very happy with how it turned out for the most part. I tried to copy the the design as best as I could, um, but yeah, it needs a little bit of work on the roof. The, the roof on the one that I saw wasn't all that weathered or weather beaten. Uh, it was actually pretty clean, but this one will get just a little bit of a uh, wear on the top. Yeah, another another one down. I'm probably gonna have a lot of auto carriers uh, before too long just because I like using them for these sorts of graffiti projects. I see them all the time. There's unit trains that pass through town all the time and so there's a lot of uh, inspiration. This next one is another auto carrier. This one is not based off of anything I've seen in real life but is my own uh, my own work there. Um, yeah, I, I like the big billboard letters and uh, definitely wanted to um, do something like that and put my own spin on the graffiti. It's very fun. It, just being able to, you could either copy what you see in real life or come up with your own thing. And it's, that's what I really like about it. I know graffiti is kind of a touchy subject with rail fans, but I think, you know, if it's not too vulgar, I actually think it's really cool, and I'm, I'm happy to do my own stuff as well, because I think it's, uh, it's a great way to get creative in a way that you wouldn't normally be uh, within model railroading. And I'll say this much as well about these Walther's cars in particular. They're not the most detailed. Uh, they're pretty basic, all things considered, but they're generally a little cheaper than the other cars, except maybe the uh, operator series from uh, scale trains and I'd like to get a few of those too but generally I can find these cars for 30 maybe 40 bucks generally and it's you know it's a good value I think especially if you're practicing you know your weathering and graffiti skills I guess 
Next up is another Walther's car. It's this NATX uh, tanker, uh, another train show pickup. This one was picked up at San Antonio, I believe. Just wanted to do some basic weathering and fading, and these things also roll th through town all the time, so I wanted to try some streaking effects and that sort of thing. And got the wheels and the, the trucks are all grimed up and very happy with how that looks. Uh, the striping, I think, uh, I got it right here. The smoke box graphics uh, striping, I actually placed over what is printed onto the car. It was a perfect fit just to cover it up. So I wanted to try that out. I know it's a little, it might be a little thick in terms of scale thickness, but I don't think you really notice when cars are rolling along, but I like the effect. I also have some pieces of uh, safety striping from uh, work. Work had to get it for one reason or another, so I managed to get a few samples. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think this one's going to get any tagging or anything like that. I actually kind of like it the way it is. So I'm just going to leave this one and uh, get a few more. Those will get tagged, but this one I think is uh, fine. It's it's more subtle, and I kind of I kind of like that. Next up is another Walther's car. This is their three bay covered hopper. Uh, very happy with with these cars. I like them a lot too. I'll probably end up getting a bunch of these in various road names and that sort of thing. Uh, but this one, I've been practicing that road grime, a uh, little bit of rust here and there, rust spots, uh, spillages, that sort of thing. And then uh, a couple a couple of different tags in black and white that on the other side has a piece of graffiti uh, based off of what I've actually seen and photographed. And you know, I didn't want to weather this car too, too much, um, but it looks like it's been out there and I'm very happy with how this one's turned out as well. You'll probably see a lot more of these uh, in the future. Next up is a pair of uh, cars from Athern and Roundhouse, or you know, they're kind of, I guess, combined at this point. This is an Athern Roundhouse uh, car that I picked up. I, I had a... I spent enough money at a hobby shop and they gave me a gift card for doing so, and it was enough to pick up one of these uh, waffle box cars. I know F boxes aren't really... don't really look like this, but I thought you know, this would be a, a cool thing to, again, just practice on. Um, and so I took uh, some graffiti from pieces that I've seen in real life and uh, applied it to here. Uh, these would have gone on uh, tea boxes, if I remember correctly, but I just put them on here because it, again, just practice. It's what this is all about. Uh, unfortunately, the, the wheels, I was doing the, the grime and the road grime and all that, and the wheels started to separate, come out of gauge, and I wasn't able to get them back into gauge. They would just, the one wheel would be really wobbly, so and that happened on two of the four wheels, so I'm just going to chunk them and put a fresh new set of wheels on this eventually. It, it's, it's not a, an accurate car by any means, but uh, I think it'll look good rolling down, you know, mixed in with a a nice mixed freight at some point, but yeah, I'm very happy with how this this has turned out. You might wonder how I accomplished the the graffiti. I take a pencil, um, take a pencil like this, uh, one of these, sharpen it real good, and I uh, do just the big block outline. I don't do any details, and then I fill that with white, either white acrylic paint or I use a a white paint marker, and then I'll go back in um, with a very fine tipped brush and kind of fill in the outlines and then do base colors and you do it in layers and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. You get a lot of cool uh, effects that way. And this other car is is the roundhouse car before they were bought by Athern, but it's the same car. Uh, I saw a photo of a patched uh, Southern Pacific Hydra Cushion car that was, it was similar enough to this. And so I followed that photo for the patchwork and the rust and the dust on the door and all that. Um, did it for both sides, roughly. It's going to get new decals, new reporting mark decals. I just haven't uh, ordered those yet. I'm going to get new trucks because I don't really care for these um, independent suspension trucks. They don't really do anything for me, all things considered. Yeah, it's uh, happy with how this turned out. This is all just the basic craft acrylic paint that you see behind you. I'm following a lot of uh, Dan's Railroad 2011, uh, that channel, uh, he's got a lot of great videos on techniques and uh, how he goes through weathering freight cars and, and locomotives and stuff like that. I've 
kind of been following a lot of how he, his techniques and everything. I, I think it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to do graffiti and weathering without, uh, you know, worrying too much about the, how permanent it is. And if you mess up, it's easy enough. Just some soap and hot water really is all you need to, to rinse it off. And, you know, you can make it permanent if you want with some uh, clear coat. And actually that's what I do is I take a, a, the car out of the package. I hit it with a Krylon uh, flat clear uh, all, all around it. It gives the uh, the paint some tooth, and then I I do my graffiti, I do my weathering, and then I seal it up again. Um, of course, if it's gonna get decals, it will get a gloss coat first for the uh, decals to go on, but that's a different different story. Lastly, for these freight cars, I have two more Walther's uh, covered hoppers. Uh, these are blank yet; they don't have any graffiti or weathering on them. I haven't decided how uh, I want to do these cars just yet. Uh, it will eventually get something. I have to go through my archive of photos now. I have a pretty big catalog of things that I've seen. Uh, and then this UP uh, hopper as well. This one, I'm actually thinking about installing a Soundtracks sound car decoder into it. Uh, I've been playing around with the trucks and some KD um, springs to make uh, pickups for. And I only have one installed so far. This is just kind of a test. Um, but I think I'm going to convert this one to a sound car. I've drilled holes for the, the wires and all that. Um, I think that'll be cool. I, I, I like just you hear lots of different sounds as, as trains pass and, uh, and I'd like to add something similar to when I whenever I run my trains. I think it'd be a lot of fun. It adds a little bit more uh, dimensionality to uh, running trains. Uh, so this car, I have yet to decide on what kind of paint and decaling and weathering. Uh, same with this one. So we got a few more pieces to work on before we have to order some more, and I will definitely be ordering some more. And while I've been focusing on the freight cars for most of this video, I thought I'd also show a little bit of the Walther's SD70AH project I've been working on. Uh, the fuel tank has gotten some extra details here and there. So we've added some extra little fuel line details there. Uh, on this side, you can see clearly the uh, yellow striping has come off in my handling of it. For some reason, it has just peeled right off. So I'm going to be using uh, the uh, safety stripe and cut into strips, and I'll replace that with the real thing. Again, I know it's going to be a little bit uh, thicker than what it should be for this scale, but I think it'll look nice. Brake line detail, uh, everything. I know that these uh, models aren't super accurate for the Union Pacific, SD70 AHs or ACEs, uh, the sand filler caps on the rear are incorrect. Uh, it should be on the sides here, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, but, you know, it's it's fine. For the price I paid, I'm happy with it. I'm going to get an Athern model uh, eventually anyway. Step lights installed. You can see they're on all four corners of the steps, and it looks great when it's lit up. We've got the running light is also hidden. Uh, Right, right there. It's kind of hidden, but again, when it lights up, it looks great. Yeah, overall, I'm very happy with this one. And this one's wrapping up now in terms of adding pieces and, and details to it. Uh, the MU hoses are kind of waiting for them to fully cure before installing the plow and then repainting them. That's uh, that's where that one currently sits. And yeah, yeah hopefully it will be uh, completed soon and running on the railroad. And that isn't the only locomotive that we are currently working on or working with. Uh, I've recently picked this up off of uh, eBay, of course. It was a Blue Box AC4400 CW. Brand new, essentially in box. Uh, I've got all, I got the box and the pieces uh, next to me here. And this is, it came unnumbered. I'm guessing it was factory like that. And I'm going to number this as one that I've seen uh, recently. I think it was 4th of July that I saw a 68, 67 roll through. And I'm pretty sure it hasn't been repainted since 1995. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to mimic uh, that locomotive on this model. Uh, there's a lot of details and stuff I need to add to this. It's got to get the new nickel silver wheels. It's got to get a new motor. Uh, I'll probably go with Kato for that again, like I did my P42. There's a lot. Uh, 
to do with this one. I'm not going to work on this for a while. This is going to be something I do in a few months, but I have the kit, I have the pieces. I'm going to start making lists of parts and things that I need. And yeah, it's exciting. I'm happy to have uh, an AC4400. I see, I think that more than anything else, uh, these things roll through. And I like this one a lot because it was really beat up and faded. And I think that'll be great to uh, replicate on this model. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll have another video soon. I just haven't really had the time or the energy to, to make videos lately. I've been spending my uh, free day that I usually have to do videos uh, actually out rail fanning and, you know, having fun doing that. But uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit more as things progress. Hopefully show a few more weathered and detailed cars in the future. We'll see. Uh, but thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.